Yes. Good morning, children. Good morning. So, how was your day? Yes, good. So, we were seeing a lesson where the mind is without fear. Okay? It is on page number 32, where the mind is without fear. So, here uh, we have a thought how to make this world a beautiful world without fear in the minds of the people. So wherever we go, we must leave away the dead habits that we have. It's like a dry desert of dead habits. So we must leave it and go forward in ever widening thought of action and of mind. So whatever we do, it should be like uh, very, very loving, kind, compassionate, and joyful. So we should not have narrow thought. So I have got some video to show you about this. This is written by uh, poet Rabindranath Tagore. So we are going to see about that and also about a, a, a small story in which you will learn that we should live without fear. Okay, shall we go into the video? Lucy was a brave girl and very strong too, but for some reason she felt scared of darkness. She always shared her room with her elder sister. One day, her sister told her that she was going on a tour with her friends. This news scared Lucy, as for the next three weeks, she would have to sleep alone. Don't worry, you'll be fine. You'll have your little puppy by your side. One night, when her parents had to go out, she was told to stay at home till the sitter came to take care of her. The weather had gone bad, and Lucy had to take care of her puppy, who was scared of the thunder. It grew dark outside, and the storm became louder. Suddenly, the lights went out, and Lucy panicked. Her puppy began to howl, and she thought, that maybe somebody was outside. She wanted to go out and see, but she was too scared. Gradually, the storm became settled and Lucy took a fresh breath of air. Suddenly, she heard someone banging at the door. She grabbed her puppy and ran into her room. She hid under the bed, crying in fear. Then she heard someone opening the door of her room. She was now completely frightened. It was the sitter. Lucy jumped out and hugged her. I was scared of dark and thought that you were a ghost. Why are you hiding over there? And why didn't you open the door when the lights went out? Oh, Lucy, there are no ghosts. It's all fiction and it's just in your mind. Lucy was still scared. So the sitter took her downstairs and showed her that they were all alone. Lucy realized that there wasn't any ghost and felt embarrassed. Lucy, you are a brave girl and smart too. Don't let little things scare you. Of all things, darkness is nothing to be scared of. If you feel scared, light a candle, be logical, and just have some courage. And if you still feel scared, think of some jokes or funny moments and laugh out the fear. You're right. From now on, I'll recall this day and laugh whenever I'm scared. Lucy understood very well. And since that day, darkness did not scare her anymore. Where the mind is without fear and the head is held high. Where knowledge is free. Where
where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls. Where words come out from the depth of truth. Where tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection. Where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit, where the mind is held forward by thee into ever widening thought and action, into that haven of freedom. My father, let my country awake. Yes, you saw that little story that you should never be scared of anything and you should not scare others also, okay? And you also learned how beautifully that poem was said, no? So we all have to walk holding our head high, okay? So you must uh, be always bold. You should do nothing uh, because of which you have to hang your head down. When do we hang our head down? When we do wrong. Okay, so you should not hang our head down means we should not do anything that is wrong or it is hurtful. So we should have our words also good, our knowledge good, our actions good. Okay, so then the world will become a beautiful place. And the poet is saying, into that heaven of freedom. Heaven is somewhere else, we think, no? We think that heaven is not here on this earth. But the poet is saying, when, you, when your mind is free, when you speak right words, when your actions are right, and your knowledge is right, so it is heaven. So he's praying that into that heaven, oh God, oh Father, let my country awake. Let my people, the people of India awake. Okay? So it's a beautiful poem. We must start. Yesterday we did the one word, figure out. Okay. Today we'll do the next one on the next page. All of you take your pencil. Yes. Tick the best option. We are on page number 34. Page number 34. Okay. Yes. I'm going to read. My voice is breaking. How is my voice now? Can you hear me? Can you hear me, children, now? Yes? Okay. Okay. So now we are going to tick the right option. Okay? First one. Your uncle wants to take you and your sister for an outing and ask both of you what you would like to do. You like to watch movies, but your sister does not. Will you take the decision to go to the movies without giving your sister a chance to voice her opinion? Let your sister state her choice and then give your preference. Which one you will do? B. So always give chance to others. What we do? We all do. What we do? I, 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 we say, no? Yes. So we never let, okay, okay, you, you say, you say. You say the answer, then I'll say, no. No, I, I, I. Okay. So that's not, let me give preference to the other person. Your parents trust you and give you the freedom of uh, staying at your, studying at your friend's home for a test. Will you misuse the freedom to go off to the park to play or Respect the freedom and study at your friend's home. Which is the right answer? Is the right answer off? You will misuse your freedom and go off to play in the park. No. What you will do? You will respect the freedom that you have and study at your home. Very good. Your class teacher allows you the freedom of coming 
late to her class because you are practicing for the inter school football match okay so will you run to class as soon as your practice is over or misuse the freedom by roaming in the corridors before going to the class a is the right answer so as soon as your practice session is over you will run to the class to be there before the uh, sorry after the practice is over okay fourth one all of us have the freedom to voice our opinion will you respect that freedom by quietly disagreeing with your father's viewpoint or argue and and voice loudly your disagreement with your father what you will do a is the right answer respect that freedom by quietly disagreeing with your father's viewpoint you will not shout okay so one b one b two b three a four a okay one b two b three a four a now let's uh, do the fill in the blanks on the next page page number 35 remember let's go to remember yes b b a a alan thank you okay freedom is the birthright of all living creatures so underline the word freedom underline the word freedom okay we are really not free until our minds are free from all kinds of fear underline the last word fear fear five uh, five is not there no more in in uh, tick the right answer only four are there here you put the number one two three four five six and remember so first we have done second we have done let's go to the third one when we receive sorry only by being free of petty thoughts can we live a dignified life so underline the word free free third one underline the word free okay yes fourth one when we receive the privilege of being truly free we must return the gift by working hard to achieve perfection so here you underline the word perfection underline the word perfection okay then fifth one we must be grateful for the gift of freedom because there are many in this world who are still not free underline the word grateful grateful you you say it grateful but the spelling is g r a t e okay grateful sixth one we must always respect freedom and never misuse it underline the word misuse underline the word misuse okay i'll say again first one underline freedom freedom is the birthright so underline the word freedom then fear in the second one fear yes thank you alan and uh, free in the third one free okay and uh, fourth one it is perfection perfection okay fifth one it is grateful and in the sixth one it is misuse yes nawful thank you so it is freedom fear free perfection grateful misuse is it okay yes how many of you liked this poem and this yes liked it yes okay so how many of you are going to live like very brave children are you going to live like a brave children a child must be always brave okay okay then let's come to we'll start another lesson okay count me in alan very good yes so let's see another lesson just a minute 
lot of light is falling on my eyes and I'm not able to read it because I am sitting in the corridor where your class is. Would you like to see your class? You are in sixth standard? Yes? Yes, see that. Can you see? Yes? Did you see your class? Because it had been very long since you saw the corridor, right? Yes. Okay. So we are going to see about Nelson Mandela. We'll see there is a picture on page number 36. Come to page number 36. See, there's a picture. Yes. Uh, we are going to see the first picture. What is there in the first picture? What is there in the first picture? House is on fire. What is there on the first picture? A house is on fire and firefighters are there. How many of you have seen firefighters? Yes. Have you seen a firefighter? No. On in movies only. I've seen them only in movies. Okay. Real fire. I don't know where fire station is here. I don't know. Mm, there is a particular phone number to call the fire station. Like 100, it's for police. Uh, hun, what, 101, okay, for the fire station. So you can go sometime there and see how they do. Okay. Uh, I, I went to a fire station and I met the firemen and saw how they work. So there is a house on fire. Second thing is that you see that man very bravely going inside the near cantonment. Okay, TV stall gate. Very good. Wow. Okay. So the fireman is going inside. Just see. Wow. Ah, how can he go inside? Because their dress is fireproof. They will not catch fire. Okay, and moreover, he is carrying an oxygen cylinder. So whenever there is fire, whenever there is a smoke, there will be less oxygen. Okay, so you won't be able to breathe. So they put on the oxygen mask and they carry the oxygen cylinder also inside. And from inside, he is bringing out a child. Yes, he's saving a child. So this is how uh, the firefighters they work. They have uh, a vehicle which got a very long stairs. Okay, it has got a crane like thing. It goes up like this. Ten stories also it will go up. Okay, and uh, from there inside wherever the fire is uh, there, they will go inside and save people. Okay, I have seen them. One day when I was in Bombay, I was in the 14th floor. Okay, 14th floor. And they were um, testing firefighting. Okay, they were testing the firefighting, and the fire, fire engine had come. And my daughter was looking out through the window, and suddenly a man's face popped up on the window, and she was scared. I was working in the kitchen. She was scared. She said, "Mommy, mommy, somebody has come to our window." I said, "Who will come to our window? We are in the fourteenth floor." Then I went and saw that it was the firefighter and then I told her just to wave hi to that uncle she waved and she was happy okay so so high they can go their uh, lift like thing the crane will take them higher up to save people okay so they are very brave men firefighters uh, they usually save people from not only from fire even from water also they save people when there is floods and all even firefighters go to help okay so now in this lesson we are going to see about somebody called nelson mandela uh, nelson mandela does anyone know who is nelson mandela yes mr nelson mandela no he was the president of south africa you never heard his name okay. You have heard his name. Okay. Okay. So he was a very brave man and he fought for the freedom of the Africans in Africa. Okay. And he went to jail many times. 
and you know 27 years nearly 27 years he spent in jail because he was fighting with the white people to give freedom to the black people so the fight that he started is called apartheid okay in which they fight for the rights of the black people so he was a very brave man though he was from a tribe you know what is a tribe they are in the jungle uh, adivasis they are in groups and their tribe will have one chieftain one person will be the head okay so nelson mandela was the son of one of the head of the tribe age number 37 yes thank you page number 37 so nelson mandela he was an african well educated but he fought for the freedom of the black people and they did get freedom and then he also became president for a while okay so he was born in transki a place called transki i met an uncle i had an uncle my neighbor who went to uh, south africa and he was telling me stories about south africa okay then i remembered nelson mandela and also i remembered mr obama who was obama mr obama barack obama anyone remembers yes nobody knows he was uh, us president okay he was U.S. president before Mr. Donald Trump. Okay. So that uncle who went to uh, Africa, he went to Kenya. Okay. In Kenya, he went and met Barack Obama's mother. She is no more now. She was alive at that time and she was very happy to meet people from India. So this man also, he worked very hard for the liberation of the black people. So on July 18, 1918, a wonderful boy was born to the tribal chieftain in South Africa. He was the son of a local tribal leader of the Thimbu tribe. Their tribe name was Thimbu. Okay, So we, were, we are all uh, part of the Dravidans. They are all part of some tribe or the other. Later on, these tribes only converted into caste. Okay. So, however, unlike his father, Nelson Mandela, he did not stay in the forest, but he went to the university. He went to the college to study. So, he went to the University College of Fort Hare and also University of Witwatersrand. So, Nelson was a very good student and he was very much qualified and he got a law degree in 1942. So, he was born in 1918. So in 1942, he got a law degree. Who studies law? What, what does the person become who studies law? Yes. If you study law, what you will become? Lawyer? Yes, L-A-W, okay? lawyer. Or you call them barrister. Or you call them judge, you become very late. Advocates, yes, very good. Advocates, barrister, or you call them lawyers. These same lawyers and advocates, they became judge after 10 to 15 years of experience. Okay. Okay. So now what happened? He said, he said one very famous quote. He was a very good student. In our school where I worked, they wrote it with a block letter and kept it in the entrance of the school where we used, we used to go. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. So if you want to change the world, you must be educated. So without education, you cannot change the world. That's what he said. So how many of you feel that education is good? And how many of you feel that education? I don't know who found it. I don't like it at all. How many of you say that? Nobody will say, huh? so many of us, we don't like education, but when we grow up, we know that it's better that we studied in a good school and we got good education. Okay, I like education. So during his time in university, he became increasingly aware of the racial inequality and injustice faced by non-white people in South Africa. How many of you have seen 
South African people. Uh, you must have seen the cricketers, right? Have you seen Sammy, Chris Gale? Yes, in TV, yes. How do they look? How do they look? Chris Gale, Sammy, and one more is there, very famous man, I don't know, black, yes. And they have very curly hair, okay? Like spring-like hair, if you just pull it and see, it's very long. But they are very nice people, okay? They are very loving and good. They have broad looks. They don't have a beautiful uh, look like other people. So this man, yeah, Pollard, very good, yes. That's Pollard also was there. So this man, Nelson Mandela, he was not like his father uh, working for the tribe, okay? So he was there uh, to get educated and then work for the freedom of the Africans. Now, there was racial discrimination. Racial inequality was there. What do you mean by racial inequality or discrimination or injustice faced by this? Means the white people were ruling there, the British, the French, the Germans, they all had their colony there. So what did they do? They thought these black people are very low. They are not capable of doing anything. So now Nelson Mandela wanted to fight against all that. Okay, so he wanted to uh, give, uh, wanted the black people to get all the rights that belong to them. So he started uh, so many protests, agitations and other things. So he was arrested and put in the jail. So now this policy of segregation and discrimination on the basis of color, okay, was called apartheid. In 1943, he decided, 42, he finished his law, we saw, no? So in 1943, he wanted to struggle against all these uh, ill treatment of his brothers and sisters. So Nelson Mandela, he stepped out. So when he stepped out, he was arrested. Obviously, those people were ruling and they will never like these men to fight like they did in India, okay? So they suppress, every time they suppress. So immediately this man was arrested. But again, after some time, he came out of his prison in 1961. Just imagine he was put inside the jail in 1943. He came to fight. And uh, in 56, he was put in prison. And in 1961, when he came out, Nelson Mandela, he said that we are going to have a guerrilla resistance against this. British. How many of you know what is a gorilla? Yes. Have you seen a gorilla? No? In zoo? In movies? Yes. You're not seeing. Okay. I'll show you a gorilla tomorrow. Okay. So how it looks like. It's, it's very intelligent. Okay. It's very intelligent. It always uh, almost behaves like human beings. We'll see about gorillas tomorrow and we will talk about this, um, what do you call, the story of Mandela. We'll continue tomorrow. So I'll give you a small homework. There is a picture here, okay, on page number 36, as we discussed about the firefighters. Just you write a few lines, okay, maybe 10 lines, a kutti story about some house on fire or some building on fire or something, some go down on fire and how the firefighters rescue it. Okay, it can be your imagination or it can be a real story. Just write it and you learn it, okay? So the moral will be to help the human beings, how you're going to help. Okay, children? So thank you so much for time. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a nice day, okay?